And in fact, on the specific issue of what's going on in the Middle East, some have been asking for a response to the war waged in Israel right now. And I prayed and processed, I'm prepared to give you that response, which is this. Christ, come soon. That's the message. Christ, come quickly. Christ, come soon. This is a way that the early church was actually taught to pray. It's somewhat foreign to us today because we live entirely more comfortable lives than the first century believers did. In danger of loss of life and limb all the time in the first century church, wherever they were planted. But we need to remember when moments like this happen overseas and locally and globally, when things like this happen, we need to remember to pray the prayer, Christ come soon. If you're expecting a, we stand with Israel or we stand with Palestine message, you are not going to get it. That's not what we do here because that's not who we are. I'll never forget one of our elders at large, one of our, our, the leaders in our church pointed my attention to Joshua chapter five. At the end of Joshua chapter five, you have this stunning uh, imagery. And now the, the, the people of God are on the verge of entering Jericho. You remember the old story as a kid, the walls come crumbling down in Jericho. They're on the eve of that day. And an angel comes to visit Joshua. And Joshua says, are you for us or for our enemies? To which the angel responds rather critically, neither. I, I represent the Lord's armies. Interesting. And it's not just one verse that I cite for our position. All throughout scripture, we see Christ and his people vowing allegiance to the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of man. And so, do we pray? Do we care? Of course. We pray for people, believers and non-believers. We pray for those hurting and suffering on all sides. We pray for the worldwide church. We pray for women and children huddled in bomb shelters and, and kidnapped across enemy lines. Did you know, I, I believe you probably did, but at the same week that these stories were breaking, there was a massive earthquake in Afghanistan. Killed the same number of people that have been killed so far in this con conflict in Israel. About 3,000 people. Of those 3,000 people who lost their lives in the earthquake, two-thirds were women and children. For, of course, there are no winners in conflict. Typically, children bear the brunt. We pray for world leaders, every one of them. Leaders of, of those places called nation-states, and leaders of those places labeled terrorist states. I watched a video, Everyday News, the woman, the person from CNN or whatever website was there interviewing the lead person for Hamas. I just thought, well, they know who he is. There he is. He's the spokesperson. He's the representative. But back to the statement, I mean, you may wonder, you may think, Ben, how could you possibly encourage us to pray for, for terrorist leaders? Well, the way I got there is that I use the words of Jesus to frame and understand everything I read in the rest of Scripture and everything I read today. I use the words of Jesus as the filter for everything. And I have to sit with the words of Jesus to say, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. I can't just closet that passage when it's inconvenient. I have to sit and wrestle with that. And in case you're ready to walk out of the room right now, that I would be so audacious and, and silly to recommend such a thing. Let me give you a little picture that might help you even break your heart for the enemy, the worst, the despicable, the, 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 the crime lords and terrorists of the world. Do you know in places around the world just like this, do you know who so often is the one that straps on the bomb vest or launches the grenade or picks up the assault rifle? Do you know who it is most likely, most usually in places like this? It's a young man. Maybe not even 18 years old. Does he know any better? His frontal lobe is not even finished forming yet. Can he critically think about what's going on in the world today? No. He just knows that there's an ideology and there's a passion. And he just knows that his little brother or sister was killed recently. And he better pick up arms and he better fight with the rest of the guys. Might that reframe how we're called to pray for our enemies, even the most despicable of the world? But the common denominator of all those statements is that we pray. We pray for justice. We pray for peace. We pray for Christ's swift return because that's what the Bible says to do.